Hey, binge watchers. Full disclosure, prior to watching the series, I had no idea what this show was about. I didn't know that it was based on a beloved comic series or how dark the material was. Nothing. To be honest, I added the show to my Netflix watch list only because the thumbnail featured a chimpanzee in a suit and how good the effects looked. It stayed on that list for a long time and I finally watched it to satisfy my superhero thirst after watching the brilliant Amazon Prime show, The Boys. The Umbrella Academy has got a 77% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and an 86% audience score, which is pretty great. So naturally, I was optimistic. But sadly, I was really bored by the show. Most of you guys must be thinking by now, God, what an ignorant prick, right, right? I get it, really. Maybe my mood wasn't right when I watched the show. Or maybe my taste isn't that good. But I almost never deem any show I watch bad or unwatchable. Except maybe the latest adaptation of Stephen King's The Mist, which is also on Netflix. But this, despite the popular opinion, I really, really got bored during the show. Who else thought this? Do you want to know what were the things that made me disinterested in this show? Did you have the same reason? Watch this video to the end and tell me in the comments. Okay, let's discuss the reasons. The show starts strong. The mystery behind the miracle bugs, which for better or for worse was never revealed throughout the season, was so interesting. And the children have powers. But rather exploring the childhood adventures of these powered people, we are shown small flashback and jumps right to the adult versions of these characters. You see, I had no problems with the performances of the actors, except maybe that Klaus character who came strongly as annoying in some places. Problem was in the writing of these characters. I am mainly talking about the Hargreaves siblings. They must be the most responsible and idiotic main characters I've seen on TV in a long time. The main plot of the series follows the characters trying to stop the apocalypse. That is going to happen in a week or so. But none of them shows any real sense of danger. Even number 5, the time traveler who witnesses firsthand the horrors to come, acts so carefree that instead of telling his superpowered siblings about it, goes to have coffee. Ugh. I know the nihilistic approach can be cool and funny for the dark comedy subject. The characters like Deadpool proved this. But is it necessary for every other character to act this way? I mean, take number 3 aka Allison for example. The whole thing with her throughout the series was how much she loves her daughter of whom she lost custody in divorce and is living with her ex-husband. She is devastated with this scenario and will give anything to live with her daughter again. Even she acts like it's a carnival that's come. Among the siblings, she has the most to lose if the apocalypse actually happens. She should be fighting tooth and nail to fight this thing from happening to ensure, well, a future for her child. But instead, she sets out to melt the broken relationship with her pugnacious sister Wanya and to fix her romantic life. Think about it. She investigates this Leonard Peabody character only because the writers know this man will be an antagonist later in the series. While all this is happening, she even tries to rekindle this part with her and number one, aka Luther. Gross, you guys, you lived your whole childhood as brother and sister. It would have been more fun if the siblings were forced to work together to find and stop the reason to cause the end of the world, and their daddy issues and abandonment issues popping up, hindering and prolonging the process. At least, we will be interested to see them solving a problem together. Instead, they had to solve their dysfunctional family issues first and then jump to action. This made, at least for me, the show unnecessarily long and painful to watch sometimes. If you guys didn't think those Hazel and Chacha characters were annoying as f I don't know what to say. At first, it was okay. There were two sociopathic time-traveling assassins trying to kill number five. It was fun. Then the show began developing a romance plot with that donut lady and Hazel. And 
Was it jealous Chacha? I'm still confused by it. Boy, talk about a boring storyline going nowhere and ultimately serving no purpose in the overall story. Every time the show comes back to them, I was like, yeah. This again. Another one is that detective character we meet at the beginning, who had a romantic past with the DA group The Dangerous, who is killed by Chacha. I think I know some of you are thinking, but she was the key to Diego's character though. Guys, really, really think about it. Did Diego's character really went through a transformation? Yes, he overcomes the desire for revenge by the end of the series, but he is still that hot headed guy who really wants to be number one. Actually, if that detective character was scrubbed the murder thing and accusing Diego of that murder and then exonerating him by Hazel handing the guns willingly at the end can all be skipped from the series and still make no difference, ya dick? Well, I may have made up that phrase but that doesn't make it untrue in this case. Adding all these elements really stretched the series. They could have reduced the number of episodes to 7 or 8, which would allow a more persuasive narrative. With a pinch of seriousness here and there, it could have been a gripping sci-fi superhero show. An example, one year, the show goes to serious lengths to tell us she's ordinary and has no powers. But truly, did we believe them? I mean, they cast Ellen Page for the role. It was a matter of time she revealed to be a powerful being. And that forced romance with that Leonard guy. Granted, we are shown his manipulation schemes, but it too goes forever. Also, Alice, a superhero with the power of persuasion, is trying to find out what his real agenda is for half of the series. We had to wait, what, eight or nine episodes for her to find out the truth? Oh, which reminds me of another big thing about this series. This is a superhero show, right? Use your powers! That's what we want to see! Sorry. Sorry. You see, Alison is in many, many situations where her powers could be extremely helpful. But why use her powers when you can go to the difficult route, right? Oh, what was that? Oh, right. Gravity. Somehow, the show managed to find a way to overuse popular songs. Every other engaging scene or action sequences are packed with this extensive use of songs. Guys, we get it. It's a thing now. Thank you, Star Lord. But not every scene should be decorated with sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Don't get me wrong, this show may have the best soundtrack ever on TV uh, or on web. Well, that's not right. What is it, a TV show or a web series? No? Anyway, just because you have it, doesn't mean you have to hit our heads with it every time. Sheesh! Even though I state all the reasons why I think this show is boring, by no means I am saying that this is a bad show. Right from the get-go, I really thought it had an interesting premise. The CGI was great for a series. I mean, that chimp was straight out of Caesar's gang from the new Planet of the Apes movies. Cast was impressive. I really like that boy who played number 5. Kid's awesome. It's just the things I said earlier and did this show boring for me. But the last episodes of the show was really interesting and the climax was so good. I am kind of curious to know what happens to these characters in the next season. If you like this video, please like, share and comment. Subscribe to this channel for more videos. Your support can go a long way. Thank you.